Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on JoeChem. Okay, now that we've had a little mini introduction to heterocycles, let's start looking at some, you know, figuring out some characteristics and properties. And in this video, I wanna talk about three in particular. Mentioned them in the introductory video, but I wanna talk about parole, furan, and thiophene. Thiophene, don't know why I stress the accent so weird. Okay, weirdly. But, so the thing is, they're all very similar, right? These two are pretty much the same for all intents and purposes, right? Because these oxygen and sulfur, same column on the periodic table, we're just differing by an energy level, basically the same, but pretty much the same here, except obviously nitrogen has an extra hydrogen, right? So what I wanna highlight, kind of two things in this video, is that these are all aromatic, And the one thing that is not very obvious, it's kind of a con it is a consequence of the first, is that these atoms look sp3 hybridized, right? Because if you look here, right, there's a bond here between nitrogen and hydrogen, that'd be a bonding area, the lone pair, and the two bonds here. This should be sp3, 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 but that is not the case. All of these atoms, they are sp2 hybridized. So I want to explain that, why they're sp2 hybridized. And I hope maybe you can kind of get a glimpse in the future as to why, because, the, uh, because of the aromaticity. Okay, so I'm gonna, these are the same basically, but I'm gonna draw these two to show you kind of how it works out. So remember back, so what I'm gonna kind of do is take this and draw it like this for us so we can kind of, like we're looking at it like, well for me it'd be this way, right? So we're like looking at it level, okay? And it's not gonna be a good drawing, I apologize, but it's gonna be the best I can do. So bear with me. Okay, so if we have this going on right here, it's a weird double bond. Hmm. Okay, so if we have this going on right here, I'm gonna draw this a little bit differently. I'm sorry, gang, I'm off my game. There we go, okay. So we know that sp2, 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 because of the, the, the double bond right here, the pi bond. So we know that there are these p orbitals like this. They're parallel to each other because we know for aromaticity we need, uh, you know, we need a ring. Everyone needs to be sp2, and those p orbitals are parallel to each other. We use the mass symbol for parallel. Okay. So right, this being sp3, how does that work? Well, there's clearly resonance here, right? We know that there's. So we don't just look like this all the time. So the last, you know, that's one thing. We don't look like this all the time. The other part of the criteria for aromaticity, right? Not just the ring and not just being, you know, having this, this system of P orbitals in a ring, but we need to abide by the 4n plus two rule, right? Remember Huckel's rule? N being, you know, N being zero, one, a whole number, okay? So clearly we have four electrons here. That does not fit the bill for 4n plus 2, right? Because it would be 4n plus 2 equals 4, that doesn't work. So, and I'm sure you remember this from our benzene days, what this nitrogen will do, it understands the energetic benefit if it contributes this lone pair to the aromatic electron count, it will align its electrons to be in an orbital parallel to these. But since we already said, you know, we have this resonance going on here, this is actually a p orbital. So, because it has a p orbital, it must be sp2 hybridized, right? So that's how we get from, we get the two, we got the four, and the nitrogen brings the last two to make it a six. So n equals one here, okay? That's how we're air aromatic. And because the electrons in this NH bond need to just stay out of the way, remember to make that happen in, you know, our world of aromaticity and parallel p orbitals, these, you can almost think of this as a graph, like an xy plane graph. This NH bond is gonna be perpendicular, not parallel, perpendicular to, um, this is a 90 degree angle, right, to what's going on with the p orbitals, okay? So everything I just explained completely applies here, but I'm just gonna draw it again, very quickly. So again, I'm gonna draw the furan kind of from a, uh, side view, so clearly we get these p orbitals going. 
oxygen, no, you know, there's only four, we need four N plus two. Oxygen realizes if it contributes one of these two pairs, we're in business, tosses them in a P orbital because of the fact that we got this resonance going on, right? And what does it do with the extra? Well, it wants it to stay out of the way. So this, what I forgot to mention, is that the orbitals overlapping here from the nitrogen side right here, this orbital here, that's an sp2 orbital. So it's not in the p, right? It's just in one of those regular hybrid orbitals. So this oxygen right here is housing, I made this a little too big, it's housing that extra electron pair in an sp2 orbital, okay? So that's it, that's the magic. So just know that even though they seemingly look sp3, the hetero atoms in this ring, right? They are in fact sp2, these three, are in fact aromatic, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase this, and I just wanna, well, just, just this drawing stuff down here, and I just wanna highlight one exam question I've seen very, very, very frequently, um, and it focuses around parole, our nitrogen-containing heterocycle, okay? Definitely could've erased this in a more efficient way, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, committed. Okay, so what I've seen a question phrased as is, uh, uh, I'm just going to write some keywords. Electrostatic. So, an electrostatic potential map shows, what does it show? Oh, the N, the nitrogen atom, in parole to be electron deficient. Or electron poor. I'll just let shorter, right? Okay, so basically it's saying prove, like, this is a finding that is to be true. Please explain it, however you like to do that. Okay, so clearly we need to kind of see why this nitrogen isn't as electronegative as it usually is, and I hope by this point that is your now built-in innate alarm to go resonance, okay? So let's draw this structure down here. This, this section's either gonna make or break you based on drawing so many five-membered rings and leaving a space right there. Okay, so draw my double-headed arrow saying we're going to draw resonance. My very first, ooh, I don't like how, there we go, okay. My very first move is down here, and I'm going to break the octet rule here, so I'm going to bounce these up as a lone pair. Lone pair, double bond, double bond. I started neutral, I better end neutral, because nitrogen I make this very obvious. A lot of resonance with nitrogen, so you can get very comfy with nitrogen. Um, because nitrogen, you know, took its lone pair and donated it to be a bond, it now has a positive formal charge. So let's keep drawing our resonance. Can swing these up right here. Lone pair right there. Nitrogen. Got a lone pair here. Plus on the nitrogen, didn't touch it. Double bond right there. And last but not least, we ring around the rosy one more time. Double bond right here. Bump these up right here. Make sure I did this right. There you go. Okay, so you can clearly see that we have four resonance structures. And if I'm going to be fancy, I can bracket them. We have four resonance structures, and in every single one, nitrogen has a positive charge. So clearly the electrostatic potential map is just displaying the fact that we have all these resonance structures, we have four of them, and in three out of the four, nitrogen bears a positive charge. Clearly the electrostatic potential map, whatever the heck that is, whatever the heck you do to produce it, would show that it's on, it's on the electron deficient side of things. Okay, gang. Thank you for going down parole, fear, and thiophene memory, new memory lane with me uh, and looking at their aromaticity, why the recipe 2 hybridized, and why the nitrogen in parole is in fact uh, electron deficient, which will come into play when we talk about acid-based stuff later. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.